It's week four of the One Room Challenge, and this week we're going to talk about refinishing floors with our brother-in-law, Michael, who's a master craftsman out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. And we're going to hang out with Melissa and Dave of Old New House. They are specialists in vintage rugs. We're going to make a selection for our One Room Challenge room that's going to change the character of the room. We asked our brother-in-law, Michael, if he would come and show us how to refinish our hardwood floors. Honestly, we had no idea where to start other than sanding it. So he sent me a list of supplies that I picked up from our local rental place and also the hardware store, and we were ready to go. And I have to admit, redoing the floors was way easier than doing any of the painting in the room. The painting took forever. The floors we did in about two and a half days. It was kind of amazing. We rented this belt sander from a local rental place, and we have Michael here who is going to help us uh, figure out how we can sand these floors so we can learn how to do it ourselves and do the rest of the house. My name is Michael Fontano. I'm from uh, Virginia. I'm a uh, cabinet maker and we have our shop located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I became a master carpenter at age 24 after working 10 years in the industry. A good tip to use the drum sander because it's a heavy, heavy piece of equipment is to start your first run in the grain direction and when you start sanding for your first run, you are going to go to move forward. So you need to apply the drum or the belt of your sander uh, uh, very gently onto the wood surface. And you kind of have to imagine that your drum uh, is a plane and you are going to uh, uh, land. Next, after the drum sander, we used what's called an edger, and just like its name, it cleans up the edges that the drum sander couldn't get quite close to. Our third and last sander is a square orbital sander, and this is gonna allow us to get nice and tight in the corners, but this thing is a rough piece of equipment to push. It looks like I've been up way late last night, but it's just a little tough to push forward, but it's easy in the pullback. To refinish a floor, you'll have different type of finishes available as a homeowner or as a professional. And so by working with a low zero VOCs, it will be first healthier for you or your children. And also you'll be able to stay in your uh, house while doing the renovation work. Looking good, looking good. Huh? Donc après, après la restauration de leur uh, plancher dans leur uh, chambre, William et Suzanne m'ont promis d'ouvrir une belle bouteille de cidre français et donc euh, voilà nous avons donc une belle après un long travail euh, tout est récompensé. When we first started talking about doing the one room challenge, rugs play such a huge part in the way that a room feels. I started talking with Melissa of Old New House and the design of the room and what we were trying to achieve. Remember, we're kind of going for that really old world world of interiors influence that we talked about in the first episode. We found three or four different possibilities as far as color palette and direction, and Melissa and Dave showed up with a whole bunch of rugs for us to look at. Now, you change the color of a rug, the style of a rug, texture of it, and it completely changes the personality of the room. This is something that we want to share the process of with you guys so that whenever you're purchasing a vintage rug, you're working with someone who knows your taste and style and can collaborate with you so that you have the rug of your dreams and that you'll keep forever. We are Old New House, Melissa and Dave Domagani. Uh, Dave is really the, I always call him the rug specialist, the rug pro. He knows everything rugs. He grew up jumping around on rug stacks in his family's rug showroom. And um, I really just have a background in photography and interior design. And we started Old New House as a hobby, just kind of buying what we liked, what we could see in our future home, and um, just really buying it on our own personal tastes. Dave's family history dates back to the 19th century. His grandfather came over in the 1920s. Yep, 1920s, fifth yeah. generation in the rug business. And every day I'm learning something new. We love meeting our customers and the stories and the journey that comes with it. Also just the stories of the rugs that we find. It's pretty interesting. We'll find one and say, you know, this seems like it's lived a really full life and I bet somebody is going to appreciate this. Even if it has, if it has holes or, you know, some kind of an issue, it's just, it still has a bright future. And uh, we love just like pairing the rug to the home and the customer. 
But most importantly, we're very specific on what we source. There's a very fine line between something that's good and something that's exceptional. And we always try to focus on what's exceedingly harmonious. Last week, someone asked a really great question that I thought we should talk about. They said, how do you get influences that say what goes in your house? And they were referencing the wallpaper from Gracie, this chinoiserie wallpaper that is a very distinct style. And I thought I should let you know where it all began and how we arrived to the wallpaper that we have in the room today. When I was about seven years old, my dad was stationed overseas. He was in the military. And whenever he came home, he brought my sister and I these red satin or silk jackets they were exotic to us. They were the most beautiful thing that we'd ever seen in our life. And we lived in Wisconsin at the time, like there was nothing that fancy there. Anyway, these jackets had embroidery on them. They had a fur lined hood. It was very, very cool. And that's where it all started. Then in high school, of course, you can't walk into any store in the 90s in Waldorf, Maryland and find a you know chinoiserie inspired dress. So my mom made one for me. She was a great seamstress and still is today. And she sewed this dress for me and I wore it to one of our high school dances. And that's it. That's how we arrive at what goes in our home today. And I hope that whenever you're designing your home that you include personal stories or design influences that make you happy. We'll see you next week for week five of the One Room Challenge. We're getting close to the end. So we have to start putting some furniture and accessories in the room. And we'll hang up some pictures too after we finish painting those doors. Maybe. <laughs>